sample of the current top 15 from your original one and only early birder. Right now, wishing a happy day to all you junior early birders out there in the cold morning air. It's 4.30 a.m., and this is Dick Whitman talking to you from KDF in beautiful San Diego. Weather today will be fair. I am 72 degrees, low tonight 51. Uh, lady, I'm supposed to pick up a uh, clearance W carp at 4.30. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll be back before company comes. Don't worry. Matter, take a wrong turn. W. Carp. There's another one for the Anthony Wayne. Go ahead.
Submarines, Commander. You will open them at sea. Submerged. By then, I'll be on radio silence and can't ask any questions. I'm sorry you didn't get to inspect the way in personally. Hard enough getting you off sick list. I think you know your exec. Dave Burston. Yes, very well. We've shipped that together before. He's been here all along, checking everything. Who is the civilian I'm carrying? Dr. Emil Dykers. The uh, Jet Propulsion Lab. Dyker's job has to do with the guts of the mission. Two sealed cases of electronic equipment installed in the radio room. Uh, your missiles aren't nuclear, of course. This is only an exercise. But these cases will take over fire control automatically when the time comes, 12 days from now. What are the targets? A couple of packages sent over from Vandenberg. So that's it. ABM. You're to test the feasibility of turning nuclear submarines into movable ABM sites. That's going to take some pretty fair navigation, Admiral. Pinpoint navigation. You, uh, you made some of your officers pretty unhappy on your last voyage, but you completed a difficult assignment. And I happen to know you did a fine job in spite of being ill. Thank you, sir. I also know, Commander, that you can run the tightest ship there is. And this time, I don't care who calls it uptight. I think you should know there are some people who think you shouldn't get another command right away, uh, let alone this mission. I get the message, sir. Congratulations on your promotion. That last deficiency report you wrote on me didn't hurt any. His lordship give you the big word? Yeah. How's the loading? It's all set, but I don't know how we did it. Never tripped over so many scientists and security men in my life. They've been aboard? Orders from Washington. Installed their own junk. How's the crew look? Great. Oh, I had to take a few late replacements, and we do have some extra rank aboard. I gave you Skip Langley as navigator. I didn't know how you'd feel. I know Skip was with you on your last trip. Or maybe it was just scuttlebutt. Forget it, Dave. We'll need the best men there are. Uh-huh. You'll have the mid-watch, Carp. And this is your bunk. Okay, fine, see? Corgi. Corgi Schmidt. I thought I knew everybody on the base. Well, I just got back from three years in Scotland. You know, electronics. And before that, I was in Idaho, MPT school. Yeah, well, you'll find it a little warmer in here with the torpedoes. Your locker's down there at the end, number 10. All right? See you, Carp. Clarence W. Carp. I seem to remember something about you on your personnel file. Something special. Something... A baby. Is that it? Oh, yeah, well... My wife's pregnant, but she's not due for another three months, maybe. Oh, well, you relax. We'll be back in plenty of time, Big Daddy. All right. You dropped something, sailor? No, sir. I'm sorry. I don't know whose they are. What do you think you're doing? I'm begging the captain's pardon, sir. I, I, I figured there'd be fireworks or one speck of dust Orville, here. Orville, Orville, Orville. What are you doing, Orville? How are you? <laughs> 
What happened to your stripes? Uh, it's Gibraltar, sir. The little misunderstanding with the French Navy with this uh, flamenco joint. We... Orville, I thought I kicked you off the bottle two years ago. Oh, it was only wine, sir. You know, no more of that hard stuff. You know, I've only got six months to go to retirement. Come in. Need anything here, sir? Yeah, see if you can find something useful for this old salt to do. But be careful. He was chief of the boat when you were still a boot. <laughs> with pleasure, sir. Easy, Sonny. First off, Pappy, we're gonna do something about that hair on your lip. Captain? It's all right, Chief. I wouldn't recognize him without it. How many more men to come aboard? Just one, sir. One more officer. William Sandover, sir. I'm sorry if I'm late, but the exec gave me a You're not late. Don't ever find a reason to apologize to me again. Philip Kettenring. I yes. doubt if Billy here's had any sleep all week. Dave's had him working a supply office. Mm -hmm. Then you're the one that knows where every sack of potatoes is packed. Every light bulb, right? Well, uh, not exactly, sir. Then you'll find out. Just as soon as we're out at sea, you're going to start unpacking the Wayne. And what, sir? You'll inventory every item in every section, and you'll report to me on anything that doesn't wear rivets. Before we get where we're going, Mr. Sandover, I want us both to know everything has been brought on board by everyone. Stand by to get underway. Line handlers topside. Assault on the Wing will continue in a moment. Permission to come to the bridge, sir. Come on up, Dory. Finished going through the officer's pantry in the forward washroom, sir. I just wondered, if there was anything unusual, do you want me to bring it to you or just to list it? Anything that isn't strictly regulation, I wanted in my cabin. Yes, sir. I thought maybe we could skip around some. That way nobody could outsmart us and hide something where we've already inventoried. I admire your cunning, Ensign, and your enthusiasm. Thank you, sir. How do you like submarine duty, Billy? I love it, sir. Very exciting life. It's the one thing we can do without. I consider this mission completely successful if you find it exceedingly dull. <sighs> Better get below, Billy. Yes, sir. About ready, Phil? Yeah. Just taking a last look. Nine or ten days, you won't even remember what the sky looked like. The ensign's a good kid. Can you remember being that young in the Navy? It's a long way up. It wasn't easy. It was worth it, though, wasn't it? We've had some good times together, Phil. Well, I better get below. Don't 
rollers today. Pull the plug, Bill. Clear the bridge. Clear the bridge. Satisfactory. All ahead standard. Set course 270. Level at 100 feet, Captain. Course 270. Speed standard. Very well. Give the watch the manners. All right, Doctor. <laughs> Doctor, don't you have anything better to read than my medical report? Oh, that. I knew you were on mild medication, vitamins. I just didn't want to make any mistake with the pills. Those are your special orders, Doctor? Or are you a head shrinker, too? <laughs> you mean that one comment from the hospital? I'm talking about this one little crack about the possible benefits of psychiatric treatment. Well, we could all benefit from that. I don't want your bedside manner, Doctor. I want the truth. Were you ordered to make any special reports on me? Captain Kettenring, after your last cruise, you were hospitalized with a virus infection, aggravated by exhaustion. If you made waves because they kept you there too long or blew your stack until some idiot intern said, aha, he's mentally disturbed, that's, that's good for you. I am only here because I applied for sea duty. If you don't like the cut of my pill, sir, flush him down the head. I won't report it. All right, all right. I'll take your pills. Sorry to bother you. 
That's all right, Captain. Any time, after all, it's your ship. The submarine is a boat, Doctor. I've been studying my orders. Well, they should be perfectly clear, then. We're to check and double-check our navigation, even take a periscope fix on an island south of New Zealand. Then we should have no problem, should we, Captain? So if you'll excuse me, I'll just go back to my book. No, Doctor. Now, I want you to show me what you can of this top-secret equipment of yours. Sailor. Sure. Washington insisted. But this safe is ridiculous. What is that to hide? There you see. That's the heart of it. Just two little boxes. You know much concern about security, I take it. Well, have you ever heard of anything being stolen off of a submarine while it was still submerged? <laughs> Mostly miniaturized computers. Relays installed to missile fire control aft, and they'll receive target warning data from underwater shortwave. That's where your wiring seems to be headed. If you will, Captain, just attend to your seamanship. I will attend to the wiring. <laughs> you don't seem very happy about this trip, Doctor. Actually, I'm not. And no offense, Captain Kettenring, but I would far prefer to be up in the fresh air watching the results of all our research. To be stuck down here like some unimportant mole just to complete some wiring or take care of the plumbing. No, I don't like that at all. Dave? <clears throat> Want a hasp welded to the outside of this safe, put a padlock on it to bring the key to me. Right, Skipper. I'm sorry, Dr. Dykers, I'll open it for you anytime you want. But no matter what your job is, I'm the one who's responsible here. For all of us, unimportant moles, and for the plumbing, too. Well, if you don't mind, Captain, perhaps I should get to work on it right away before you put the hasp on. Luckily, I found a capable electrician on board your vessel to help me. Hey, what are you doing to my bunk? Look, Orville, you don't have to get your dirty hooks all over. <laughs> oh, write these down, sir. Several publications filled with pictures of naked ladies. Full inspection, the captain says. Write everything down, sir. Now, Orville, you didn't have to do that. I got those are the best books we got on the ship. <laughs> of pizzas in here, three apricot, and two tomatoes. Well, now, none of this stuff has been touched, sir. I'll just count them up. Wait a minute. Some of these cans have been moved. They're out of line. How about that? <laughs> Come in. Well, I don't know why you sent for me, sir. This is much better than anything I've got in my stores. I've already got enough of a headache, thanks. I thought maybe you could give me something for it. Take these. Come in. Oh, and I'd like to have your radiation tab, too, sir. Are you starting to develop, Doc? Mm -hmm. Here, take this. I have more of those, sir, but I would much rather see you get some sleep. Here's the key to Diker's cabinet. The only one there is. Phil, some of the men are a little unhappy about Sandover going through their private lockers. I'm keeping Sandover and Kelly on their inspection for this whole cruise, if necessary. And tomorrow, 
I want the torpedo men to start taking apart every fish and putting them back together again. Well, these must have been left behind by a civilian workman. Phil, you don't think something worse was left aboard, do you? I don't think anything, Dave. The Wayne may look clean to you, but she's going to be cleaner. This time, this cruise, everything is going to be perfect. Understood? Sure. Only I think you should listen to the doc and get some rest. You don't look too good. Just a headache, that's all. Assault on the Wayne will continue in a moment. Blast it. Can't you see the warning light? Sorry, sir. I've got a little infection on my arm. I thought you'd better see it. to report to me this morning. Maintaining my cover was more important. I was with Dykers. Any orders yet? Just continue with what you're doing. We'll both receive further orders in nine days. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that I think it's insulting to have my personal belongings searched. It was necessary for security reasons. Your camera. Uh huh. Where's the film? Oh, I'm sorry. They must have forgotten to put it back in. When we get through, I'll see that you get a fresh roll from the ship stores. Listen, Captain, if I had brought a bomb aboard this ship, you can be sure you'd never have found it in this cabin. Doctor, the search was not directed against you personally, and I'm sorry if it caused you any inconvenience. Your family? Yes. You're a very lucky man. Thank you. Where are they now? We live in Aspen. But I don't suppose you've ever been there, Captain. You can't possibly reach it by submarine. As a matter of fact, Doctor, I spent my honeymoon there. One letter. Just one letter I left out in a watch log entry. Join the club. My section was seven seconds too slow in torpedo drill. And I thought I was going to get drawn and quartered. Commander, you were with him on his last cruise. I heard stories about that, about how rough he got. The old Kettenring was sick on that cruise. Here, you want the three? You mean he and his wife had just busted up, don't you? Come on, Skip, what's the story? I mean, you're an old friend of his and Janice's, and everybody knows they're getting a divorce. Not that I can blame her for abandoning ship after 12 years with Captain Bly. Knock it off. Be 
complex, that's all. Intravenously, it gives about the quickest pickup there is. Should do the trick, Captain. But, sir, I don't understand what's wrong. Did either of you ever know a good sailor who didn't bring something personal on board his ship? I guess not, sir. Yet here, Mr. Sandover, here you claim we have two men who didn't bring one single photograph, not one single item that isn't on the permitted list. There must be creeps. Uh, are these are the service records, sir? I'm sure we haven't overlooked anything, sir. And I'm sure you have. Either you're both careless or you've been lying to me. Now, there's three days left. Three days for you to do your inventory all over again, and you'll inspect from bow to stern. Captain, we have a 40 fathom reading on the fathometer. What's our position? We're approaching the outer edge of Hamilton Reef. That means our island lies about uh, 20 miles south-southeast. Idaho 66. Hey, I don't know this guy. Can't you trust anybody anymore? Sure, Skip. Who? Dave, call me when you're clear for sightings. Aye, aye, sir. understand and I was only trying to pass things up between you and Janice you interfered in something that was none of your business all right maybe you could be right but Janice doesn't deserve this I was only trying to get you to take a second look now you just go and get those sightings won't you ever listen to anybody else does everybody always have to be perfect man the way you've been tearing into this crew that's enough now shut up no, you're getting sick again, and you won't admit it. I'm warning you, Skip. If you don't... All right, you know, throw me in the brick if you like. But for one second, listen to yourself. Just listen. See how you're acting. Captain, we're picking up an SOS on short wave. What? From the island. SOS. It's very faint, sir. Something's wrong with her power. But they've got a man who's been hurt. They're asking for help from any ship in the area. I didn't even know there was anybody on Lord Hamilton Island. Just a pile of rocks and a bunch of birds. No, there are a couple of English scientists. It's an ecological survey. This guy's maybe dying. He says, bleeding internally. Somebody named Ellington. Ellington, Donald Ellington, of course, the naturalist. He's done some remarkable research on seabird migrations. The signal's getting fainter. Anybody answering it? No, sir. Not a peep. There's nothing in our order that says that we can't answer an SOS, is there, Captain? We're on radio silence. So here we are, just a few miles away, with all the facilities of modern science, while a really important man lies dying. Captain. Look, we're nearly a full day ahead of schedule. Couldn't we at least send a raft ashore? Too far offshore for the raft. Let's see how close in we can get. Dave, have Sandover take two men. And Dr. Reardon, tell him to do what he can. Aye, aye, sir. Assault on the Wing will continue in a moment.
Boy Scout to Master. Boy Scout to Master. This is Billy. Ensign Sandover reported in, sir. They've landed and made contact. What are you doing up here? Well, I thought I might spell the lieutenant, sir, so we can go below and have a cup of coffee. Donald, can you hear me? It's some Americans. There's a doctor. Thank heaven you heard us. No word from the island, sir. Say, you know those two creeps we've been checking out? Well, one of them is just a kid, and he's too chicken to bring anything on board. Orville, never mind that Captain, now. please listen Orville, to me, please. Orville, please, I don't even remember what I said to you in Sandoval. Captain, this fella Carp, he was supposed to have been in Idaho in 66, same time I was there. Except I don't remember his face. I didn't tell him that. I asked him a couple of questions, and he don't remember me, and I was an instructor. How do you forget an instructor? People he don't remember, and he's got a lot of places in the wrong place. I tell you, this fella Carp was never in Idaho. This Clarence W. Carp is not Clarence W. Carp. What are you doing? Yeah, I thought maybe I could help you fix your radio. Your signal's so weak. No, no, it's a generator. Just won't give us any juice. I've been working on it all week. And those batteries are practically dead. How about a cup of tea, huh? Sure, thanks. bring this man Ellington on board. He may have a ruptured spleen. Yes, sir, I'll relay your message. Yeah, I want to go outside so they'll receive me better. Give me a hand over here, will you, sailor? Scout to master, this is Billy. Boy Scout to master, Boy Scout to master, come in. Go ahead, Boy Scout, I'll read you fine. I went down five times myself. 
Joe here nearly got sucked in under the rocks. Excuse me, sir. The captain wants another search party on the double. That's fine. He'll be fine there. Everybody out. Thanks, boys. Would you take this place? Everybody out right now. He is Donald Ellington, isn't he? I mean, if I thought I, I could speak to him the for just a moment... The man is unconscious. I have to restore his blood level first. Get him out of shock, please. Everybody, right. thank you. Doctor. Did, uh... Did Sandover say anything to you about what he was going to radio to us? Just before he... I already told you, Captain. Billy wanted to get better reception, so he went back out on the bluff. He was going to call you about Ellington here. That is all. All right. All right, but I remind you, Doctor, that although this man may be a distinguished ally, he's not an American. What? This is a classified boat, Doctor. You'll keep him confined here in the sick bay until we can transfer him to another ship. For heaven's sake, Captain, the man has broken ribs, probably a punctured lung, a ruptured spleen. And as for you, if you don't get off your feet and get some rest, you're going to be the one who's confined to sick bay. Coldest water I've ever been in. What are you doing here? I said, what are you doing here? I ordered another search party. Sir, they'll never recover Sandover's body in that surf. It's 42 degrees and it's almost dark. Captain, I talked to the other Englishmen on the island. They found a broken rung on the ladder where Billy must have slipped. It's an 80-foot fall, sir. We could lose another man in those currents. Then send in fresh swimmers. But get going. Phil. Phil. I got my sightings. Let's get out of here. That's enough out of you. I'll give the orders. And I'll make the decisions. Dave. Aye, aye, sir. Corky. Second shore party. Hit the raft. I'll be on the bridge with the radio. I want to see the electrician. Carp. Carp. Get the... Get the dock. French, give me a hand. Take it easy. 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 You better take over. Somebody's got to run this boat. It'll be okay. Benson, hold that raft a few minutes. Just hold it. Easy, fellas. Okay. Oh. Is somebody right. getting the dock? Shut the door. Dave, shut the door. Don't try to talk. You just passed out, that's all. You got a fever. You're burning up. Sand over. Sandover was trying to radio me, Dave. Phil, we can't help Billy now. Why would he get on a ladder? On a ladder to radio? We'll figure that out later. But we've got to get out of here. All right, all right. All right. But you've got to find out what happened. Talk to Kelly. Listen to Orville Kelly. Listen to what he has to say, will you? I'll talk to him, Phil. Sorry, I couldn't get here faster, sir. You are running a fever. Heart's okay. Here. Take three of these. No, no more pills. Phil, take them. Do what he says. They are only aspirin, Captain, to knock your fever down. You have got some kind of an infection. Now, I will be back later. Aspirin. Aspirin. I'll take care of everything, Phil.
Phil. Assault on the Wing will continue in a moment. Secure that search party. Prepare to submerge. Hatch is secured. Dive! Dive! What's that captain doing still walking around? He's a very tough customer, our commander, Captain Ring. Finally, I had to shoot typhoid toxin directly into his bloodstream. He's been fighting that off all day. We've no time left for mistakes, Doctor. Less than 12 hours, in fact. Well, it'll be down for good now. I just gave him three pills he'll never wake up from. Oh. Mr. Burston. to our rendezvous, Captain. Hey, Dave. What's this course you got us on? This is the craziest trip I ever took. You keep this speed up, and I figure that at exactly 1945 hours, we're gonna sideswipe the southern tip of New Zealand. We'll slow up in a couple of hours and start the next leg. Phil didn't tell me we were going to take an evasion course. Well, he showed me his full orders. Apparently, the Admiral was worried we might be spotted by trawlers when we took those island sightings. How is he? Sound asleep. Hasn't moved. I need 30 minutes to cut those cases loose in the radio room. Where's Dykers? Asleep. Time? 0600 hours, 21 minutes, 30 seconds. Rendezvous is scheduled for 0730. Pick up several minutes later. What about us? After pickup, there's a hatch in the aft section and a raft. when you set the timing devices on those. The dials are rather small. I've used this type before, and I've already picked out the right places to put them. something. A small ship, maybe. It's pretty far off. Well, watch it. Stay on it. Just some freighter. I'm finished. 
We picked up our contact on Sonar. I still have the two things to plant. Well, what time are you setting them for? They'll blow in 60 minutes. All right. You've got to I'm listen. Try Shh. Shh. Listen, I just come from the radio room, and one of the cables that goes into that special cabinet, well, it's been cut clean through, sir. And cop was just in there. Start over. Yes, sir. I was just in the radio room. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's our speed? Well, I don't know, sir. You get hold of Carp right away. If you have to drag him, drag him up here. Yes, sir. And then wake up Dikers. Now hurry up. Yes, sir. Assault on the wing will continue in a moment.
Wake up. Come on, you're still kicking. Come on, let's get out of here. Control manners here. Bill, get the starboard bushings and some cables. The shaft is out of line. The starboard turbine still looks okay. All damage, I don't know yet. But we've got some water. You better tell Dave to stay on the service until we can check. Got it. Radar, sir. We got company. What is it? I don't know yet. There's a smaller blip separating from it. What's the range? Ten miles. It's a plane. Coming slow. Oh, it's a helicopter. Dave, you better man the bridge. Dave? Shut it. And lock it. Radar reports a helicopter approaching, sir. Seven miles. Carp's dead. We'll have our pickup in three or four minutes. Here's the forward loading hatch. Carp planted two charges, Phil. We'll never get off this boat, Dave. There's a hundred and ten. We'll get off. I'm acting skipper. This boat and your hundred and ten men will be on the bottom in exactly eight minutes. I'm sorry, Phil. I didn't know it would be you. Sorry for what? That you're a thief and a traitor? Traitor's just a word. From where I stand, the only way we'll have peace is if both sides stay even. I see. You're gonna kill us all for humanitarian reasons, right? If you want to put it that way. You're nothing but a murderer, Dave. Just, just a murderer. another charge someplace else. You got less than eight minutes to find it. Dr. Reardon? Mr. Ellington? Continue in a moment. Assault on the Wayne. Boom, Commander. Go ahead. 
Can't. There's another charge set somewhere below. Scheduled to go off in less than three minutes. seconds ago, we were supposed to be one dead sub. The report would read, lost at sea, cause unknown. You know, Phil, that was an act of war. Yeah, but not the kind we're trained to fight, Skip. Nobody will ever hear about it outside of certain closed doors. What do you mean? Well, we don't want to advertise Dacus equipment and 
they sure won't admit they tried to steal it. Pull a plug, Bill. Clear the bridge. Clear the bridge. Skip. Orville, I've got three packages of yours at my cabin. If you stop by later, we'll have a look into them. I'll drink to that, sir. Someday I'll be able to square things with you. I'll do the apologizing. Maybe you were right. Maybe I don't take a second look at people often enough. Like Janice. I'd like to send her a message when we're off a of radio silence. Dikers. I think you've got some very important rewiring to do. Right. I'll get to it immediately. A team of super scientists have their hands full. Nuclear detonation and a deadly virus threaten to end all life in the Andromeda strain. Now, stay tuned for Popeye, next on A&E.